decide to share with you in this one how to heal anything with more ease. You might hear some helicopters go through this video. I apologize, I'll explain why very soon. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. My name is Chimi. I am a dancer and a poet and a doctor, now a doctor of 20 years. And my passion is to help people uncover and live their most delicious, healthiest, and most conscious lives. I do that through the healing dances that I create and perform for others and through my holistic guidance as a physician. On this channel, I love to create content around holistic health in general, my raw vegan lifestyle, minimalism as a powerful health act, all infused and with more dance. If any of that sounds interesting to you, then subscribe down below if you're not already. Let's get into this video. I'm going to be sharing in this video a powerful interview I had with somebody I had the pleasure of working with. I get to work with incredible people. I think my work attracts people who are ready to do the work, ready to live their best lives, ready to uncover and face the past, face what they need to heal. I think the most thing, the most powerful thing I want to give and offer in this video is the idea that healing can be delicious. Healing can be, have greater ease. I don't mean that it's always easy. And I don't mean that there will be times where <laughs> you question things or you are feeling miserable. But it can overall have a feeling of ease. How? I want to offer this idea, and it's something that I incorporate through all my work in my healing dances, in my one-on-one -on -one sessions with clients, in my membership program, in my book, Delicious Healing. And it's the idea of the connectivity of all, the connectivity of everything. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you look within your body, all your organ systems are connected. Often in the Western world, there's this idea that you go to the liver specialist for something, you go to uh, the neurologist for something else, you go to a cardiologist, you, there are all these different specialists, and it can end up compartmentalizing our very own body, not to mention the mind-body. But within, even just here, the thoracic area, there's so much connection. And when we realize the liver speaks to the spleen, which speaks to the small intestine, which speaks to the heart, which speaks to the lymphatic system, it allows for flow and it allows for greater ease during your healing journey. Let's take a step further back. The connectivity of mind, body, and soul. This idea that you have to train your body to do what it needs to do use your mind to control your body, I think it's disconnected and it's painful. It causes more suffering and it can actually take your healing process backward. But understanding rather that when your mind has resistance, you can use your body, you can use breath, you can use a more gentle process to calm the mind and vice versa. When the body is struggling, the mind can through affirmations, through other practices of the mind, help guide the body through healing. And then the soul, the spirit, whatever word you want to give it, the greater I am that draws all of it together, that makes you truly whole. Honoring all these parts of you helps the healing process be much more in flow. Take one step further back. There were helicopters going around. Last week we were evacuated from our home because of forest fires all around. I am blessed to live in nature amidst the pine trees, but those pine trees, a lot of them now have been burned. We were evacuated from our home and for a few days we had no idea if our home was gonna be still standing. We had no idea what we'd come back home to, if anything. What did we do? We went to the seaside rather than staying in the periphery of the city and looking to see, is that our house burning down? Is that, we left and we went into nature. We didn't leave, we returned to nature. And there by the sea, I danced. 
and there by the sea I prayed, and there by the sea I meditated and sent love to those who are also, were also struggling. I'm so happy to share that a few days later we found out that our home was okay and we were able to come back, but it's been a trying and challenging several days. I bring this up in this video to share that again, there's connectivity in everything. I know that the trees were burning because of something we did, man-made. Somebody lit a fire and it started the first forest burning. And because of that, people lost their homes. We are connected to one another. Every action we do can affect others, can cause homes to be gone, can cause forests to burn. But vice versa, our gaze, our look, our own healing, our kind words can cause somebody to change their life for the better. You have that power. We are all connected to one another. We're connected to this mother earth. We're connected to the other species. When we realize that, wow, when we really feel that and embody that, there is such healing to be had and healing becomes more easeful. I'm so excited to share this interview here with you today with Fede. I hope you enjoy it. I wanna share with you before it starts that one-on-one -on -one sessions with me right now are booked. I don't have any space for one-on-one -on -one sessions, but I have a lot of other offerings, my healing poem dances, uh, my membership program. And if you want to sign up to stay connected with me, click on the link in the description box below to get on my email list, my newsletter, where I offer free every month holistic health tips. It will also be there that I share when my one-on-one -on -one sessions are, are available again for people to sign up for. Enjoy the interview. So Fede, again, welcome and thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Tumi. It's a joy and a pleasure to be here with you. Mm. Can you maybe, Fede, let's begin. I'm thinking about just sharing a little bit about what drew you to my work, um, kind of pre our time together, what it was that made you look, seek me out. Yeah, so... I have been on a healing journey for um, a long time. I suffered from dystonia, a neurological disorder, um, among other things that uh, impacts the use of muscles, causing spasms and um, um, involuntary movements and lots of pain. And I was able to do a lot, um, you know, in the last 10, 12 years. And I knew that I could go further. I knew that there was more to be done, especially on the diet and detoxification front. And I had been flirting with raw foods for um, a long time. And I somehow never managed to quite make it happen, among other things, because I had been put uh, over the course of the years wrongly on several courses of antibiotics. And so my ability to digest um, raw foods wasn't great. And so when I came across your um, work and your videos, I um, could sense how the raw foods were a part of a holistic vision of health and a way of living in alignment um, with nature, with, you know, the way we have evolved to, um, to eat and, and be in the world um, for a really long time before we started, um, you know, living the way we do now. Um, and I felt that there was a coherence, as you said, in, in several of your videos, of body, mind, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And I was really looking for someone who could combine that um, medical knowledge and, you know, a rigorous approach um, to, to health with an understanding that 
these three elements, um, body, mind, and spirit are not separate. And that health is a um, is something that emerges out of all three of these uh, really working together and um, kind of supporting each other. And so I was very help, very happy to um, to have come across you and um, very happy that we got to work together. So many beautiful things that I feel like you just shared. And one of them that sticks out immediately and one of the things I loved about working with you immediately was that you had done so much work already. Um, you had done, you know, you are somebody who, and I always say this, like, I only want to work with people who are ready to do the work. Um, and I mean by that, the work of healing, the looking at things and, and going there and diving in. And it was so beautiful to see that, you know, dystonia is something that a lot of, a lot of practitioners in the medical world will say, there's your diagnosis. There's not much we can do about it. And the fact that you had said, mm -mm, I'm going to heal this. And you had done so much personal work on your own was inspiring, Fede. And um, and then to also, the, the fact that you also were like, I know there's more. And I love that because for me, as a holistic physician, the way I come at it, it's not just about healing disease. It's about living your best life. It's about living your most delicious life. So it's not just like, I want to be okay. It's I want the best. And I felt that from you. It's like, I've, I've gone, I've gone so far already, but I know there's more, I know there's more. And I felt that hunger and that was so beautiful to witness. Thank you so much. Yes. And I, you know, I'm right there with you in terms of it's not just the absence of disease. It's about thriving. It's about the energy flowing through our bodies freely. It's about um, us being able to bring this energy, you know, not just to the way we inhabit our bodies, but also the way we show up in the world and the way, um, you know, our psychology works and, you know, cultivating joy and happiness and love. Um, this is what health and well-being is all about. And that's what I think it should be all about, um, you know, more broadly, but it's actually very rare to come across um, practitioners in general, but medical practitioners in particular, who get it in mm -hmm. this way, that we are built to thrive. And it's just suppressing symptoms, managing disease, uh, masking symptoms, which is what most, um, you know, which is what the consensus is around dystonia is, you know, just injecting um, neurotoxins to freeze the muscles that um, that are spasming. That's not interesting. <laughs> that's that's not what it's all about. If we really want to heal, we need to find root causes, we need to bring love to our wounds, we need to really go, you know, to the places where the, the hardship is, and try to bring, um, to bring wholeness, to bring love, to bring vibrancy, to let that energy flow. That's what healing is all about. And I feel like that was, you know, the, the way we went about things. Yes, it's a big, well, so beautifully said. And some of the words you use, wholeness, you know, which is for me, that's what healing is about. It's about a return to one's wholeness, an uncovering of one's wholeness and love. You know, you know, with our work together, love is a pillar of, I believe, healing and self-love, which is a mirror of love for others. Um, and I really loved what you said about this body, mind, spirit, and um, you feeling that from my work. It's a huge foundation of the work I do. It's, I'm not, I don't prescribe pharmaceuticals anymore. I haven't in, in years, um, but I don't even usually recommend lots of supplements or um, I might use, er I might recommend herbs as a corollary or as part, but the real foundation work, as you know, with our work together is really about going within and lifestyle changes, the food, the movement, the mindset, right? Um, the meditations and the affirmations. And so I love that you picked that up from my work. And I'm curious to know, apart from that holistic approach, what else do you feel like you saw 
when you when we started doing our work together that you found maybe was different from either past practitioners you'd worked with? Um, how would you describe me as a as a holistic healthcare provider, and what kind of set this apart maybe from past experiences? Well. I could speak for an hour just uh, um, about this because the differences are are so um, so huge and um, so numerous. But um, I'll focus on a couple of key um, elements. One is a perhaps really big picture difference, which is that the medical world in general is rooted in a scientific worldview, which is a very materialistic worldview, right? It's all about what can be seen and measured and what is out there as opposed to what is within and what is felt by the subject, right? And I think one of the biggest impediments to true healing in our current medical um, worldview is the fact that, um, in the words of someone that I uh, really admire, Dr. Um, Dan Siegel, mm-hmm. um, he uh, he says, you know, when we were trained in medical school, we were taught to look at patients like a bag of fluids that reacted to inputs by producing certain outputs. And, you know, whatever went in within the bag of fluids not really interesting, right? That couldn't be further from the truth, right? The way our inner world, our inner landscape is organized, the way we approach our health, our illness, the way we um, go about the project of creating change and, and so on is crucial in producing the outcomes and the healing and the reality that we want to, um, that that we're looking for, right? Um, and so the first thing that I think made me really feel at ease with you is that you get that 100%, right? Um, it's at the core of, of your work, of who you are, of how you approach things. Um, and so what's within is, is just as important as what is outside, right? Um, And so, you know, when it comes to dystonia um, and I think disease in general, these are such complex phenomena that have so many different components um, that cause them to to emerge. Um, And so, in a radical, uh, in a regular medical context, when there is a symptom, you know, there's sort of an algorithm that says, okay, this symptom, this medication, if not this medication, this other one, and if there's this side effect, then another one, and we're kind of prisoners in the algorithm, right? Um, and we're not taking into account anything else that um, that is going on for the person, but um, in the type of um, framework that, you know, we worked with, um, you were 100% attentive and um, in tune with how something that might have been going on with me emotionally uh, or psychologically was impacting my ability to um, create certain changes uh, in terms of diet and cleansing, for example. And, um, And so, you know, there's an ability to see that things are interconnected and um and to work with that um and last thing i'll say is that because of this outlook there's never i never felt from you a desire to kind of impose something mm-hmm. on me right which i have so often felt with other practitioners um in western medicine specifically that you know, either you do the thing that I'm telling you to do or get out of my office. You know, this is the protocol. And um, and if you're dealing with side effects, if you're suffering, if uh, it's not working for you, then you're just being capri- capricious. Whereas with you, it was really, okay, let's listen. Let's 
feel things, um, you know, in their whole truth. And um, let's work with the truth as it emerges and let's be responsive and let's be gentle and let's, and let's be kind. So, you know, radically different um, from, from past experiences. Mm, that feels really good to receive from you, Fede. And um, I love that thing you mentioned about Dr. Siegel, and I would even take it a step further and believe that, you know, this idea of like, as within, so without, I believe that sometimes actually your within creates your outer world, right? It's not this idea that it's like, uh, it's, it's not just as important, it actually can create what you experience out there. Um, I really feel that kindness um, and gentleness are something that are is missing horribly in the medical healing world. Um, this idea of somebody in a white coat or in a suit or whatever, giving you a prescription, um, I think it's not just outdated. I think it could be actually quite harmful. And I really love that you resonated with the approach of listening because sometimes it's the questions and the curiosity more than anything rather than a, a, a not rather than a um, prescriptive way of, of approach that really opens up so much more the healing because you can really relax and you can look at things without judgment and so much of dis-ease comes from years and years of judgment um so thank you for for speaking on that I'm curious to hear from you if you can share a little bit about the benefits so people can, can hear everything you're sharing and it's so beautiful. And um, but maybe give us a before and an after. How did it how did the work shift things from you for you? So I was again looking to get closer to raw foods to increase the, the percentage of raw foods that, um, that I was eating. Um, and at the same time, every time I tried, it was very difficult because of everything that I had been through with the antibiotics and, and so on that was, that were prescribed to me, um, extensively for exactly all the wrong reasons. Um, and you know, they really wreaked havoc on my GI tract. Um, there was that and there was in retrospect the fact that um i had accumulated a lot of mucus um in the body um which you know will prevent you from uh really digesting things um properly and and so every time i tried to uh increase the percentage of um of raw foods in my diet i would get you know really bad gi um, symptoms or, you know, I would feel really weak and I didn't have the confidence to say, okay, I can stick with this and perhaps take it a step further and try to cleanse and see what happens then. Right. So one of the big benefits from our work together was the fact that, uh, you know, I could touch base with you and, um, and get that feedback that says no okay you can you can stick with it okay if you want to take a step back you can do that um and um and it's all good and you know this happens to lots of people and um you know uh, if you feel ready um emotionally to take it a step further then um you know i'm right here with you holding your hand and um you know metaphorically and um and supporting you as you as you go through this and so through our work together, I was able to, um, you know, explore um, some juice cleansing and days um, of just fruit. And um, I did, you know, another type of uh, of cleanse also with some, um, you know, some uh, psyllium husk and, and so on. And so I was able to really kind of take things to the next level and uh, cleanse the GI tract in a way that I would just have not been able to do um, without that support. And mm. um, and so, yeah, I'm now able to eat, um, you know, 
predominantly the vast majority of what I eat is raw food, um, which feels great. Um, it's it's such a vibrant um, and life affirming way of eating. Um, so joyful, so um, energetically. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking for for the right word, but I think vibrant really is is the the word that I'm looking for. Um, it's a high frequency way of of being, and so um, I see the benefits of this, you know, for for my nervous system health and my health in general um, all the time. I know just how well my nervous system responds to. Um, you know, watermelon or, um, you know, my big green smoothies um, in the morning. Um, and, um, and so I'm just really grateful to be able to have gotten to the point where I can do this easily. And um, I'll tell you now, if I don't have my green smoothie in the morning um, and my big bowl of fruits for lunch and my salad in the evening, um, things just feel off. And, um, and so I'm very, very happy to be able to contribute to my health in this way, again, both physically and emotionally and spiritually, because, you know, when we're not encumbered by unnecessary, you know, waste in the GI tract, when the food that we eat keeps us awake and and alive and and so on um you know the benefits span uh you know all those domains so mm. that's just one of the benefits so i've heard from that this this more easefulness basically with adhering to what you really feel and i believe also is just high vibrational diet your raw vegan diet um, in a way that maybe was more of a struggle before our time that it feels much more easeful to do that is that correct a hundred percent yes mm -hmm. and also um uh and um a healing it's it's a continuing process of the dystonia um and a lot of the symptoms you were having i remember we talked about some of the alignment getting better is that true as well Yes. So part of what happens with dystonia is that, um, and this is, you know, kind of at the cutting edge of, um, of how these things are, are, um, being understood and, uh, uncovered and, and researched. But, um, I think we're learning more and more that toxicity impacts the nervous system and, you know, there's, uh, information out there, um, telling us that, certain pretty severe nervous system conditions um, are impacted by toxicity and, um, and, and so on. And, and, and so eating a diet that supports your body's natural desire to get rid of what doesn't serve has been transformative um, in that I feel just how much better the nervous system communicates. Mm -hmm. And you know there are again some cutting edge perspectives on um on the nervous system and what healing is in terms of you know flow of electricity in the nervous system and you know raw foods fruit in particular they're very electric um foods right so um i really feel that um there's just more of this electricity to go around for the nervous system and so I, um, if I simplify, but just to give, um, you know, the audience an idea, uh, when it comes to dystonia, you might have a hypertonic side, a side that is using too much electricity and one that is hypotonic, one that is not using enough. And so when the nervous system communicates better, when you're eating this high vibrational electric diet, then you're much more able to wake up your hypotonic side, the one that is sleepy, um, and align it with, um, you know, your along your midline, um, and allow the hypertonic side, the one that is working too hard, to really let go. And so, part of what I have to do to continue my healing work is um, 
to further align my maxilla, so my upper arch and my cranium that have been, you know, distorted by a lifetime of muscle and nervous system imbalances. And so eating raw foods, I am so much more able to create that balance in the nerves, which creates balance in the muscles, which shapes the bones, right? So um, it all starts with, um, um, with, you know, the raw material that we put in. And as you were saying, with our ability to witness from within, witness ourselves into a state of greater healing and, and balance. And so having the raw foods just helps you do that so much more. So eloquently said, Fede. And, you know, I feel like the way you were also describing the raw foods, you were talking about joy and a lot of people struggle with, um, they may know, a lot of people say, oh, I know that's high vibrational food, but it's hard for me to just do it and be consistent. And so it makes me so happy that the work we did has helped you do it more easily. And there are people who do it, they get it done, but with a sense of I've got to do it or... Um, if I don't do it, I'm bad, or that relationship with food that's that's punitive. And one of the things that's really at the core of the work I do is really healing our relationship with food. Can you speak about if you felt benefits around that element um, doing our work together? And if so, how? <clears throat> yes, part of my cough, we've had wildfires uh, oh. up here. And um, I heard, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, not ideal. Um, but um, I love the question because it's so crucial. We tend to tie our self-worth to all kinds of things. So if I'm able to accomplish X, then I am good. I am worthy. I am, um, you know, I matter. I am important and, and all of that. So our self-esteem and self-worth are tied to all kinds of external accomplishments and um, all kinds of ideas of what should and shouldn't be. And that's how we're conditioned since um, childhood, right? Um, you know, to, to be a good boy, good girl, and, and so on. And that's not a successful or that's not a path that is conducive to success, I think, um, in healing, right? Um, the way to really produce change is to know that you matter, you are important, you are good, no matter what. And that once you connect to your intention and what you really are looking for and what really is important to you, then allow it to naturally shine through. And so I felt that through our work together that um, it was really clear that every time there was a sense of tightening, of, you know, contracting around an idea of, you know, things should be this way. And, oh, I didn't manage to stick to, um, you know, to my cleanse uh, today and, and whatever, um, that there was never that kind of punitive approach, as you say. Um, it was always, okay, let's reconnect with with what's important for you. Let's reconnect with your intention um, and let's reconnect with that idea that you are good and worthy and important and, and all of that, no matter what. And, um, and that allows so much more freedom um, and it allows us to, you know, transition to the kind of way of eating that we're um, looking for in a way that is gradual and that is sustainable. Because if we just force ourselves into a transition that is too quick or what have you, um, because yeah, I can do it. I'm so disciplined. I'm so, um, you get the point. It just doesn't work. We end up swinging back. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's my experience. So grateful that, you know, there was a radically more compassionate approach from mm, you. Compassion is, the, is a perfect word for it. And it's been my experience as a physician, but also as a human in this world, as a human with um, who's not perfect and will never be, 
uh, my experience has definitely been that the compassionate approach is really the most successful approach because at the heart of it, I believe we are love. That is our frequency. That is our identity. And so if we are doing things or having a mindset um, or an approach <clears throat> that is a not that vibration. You might be eating the best foods, you might be doing the best workout regimen, but if it's one that's like, I've got flogging yourself and, and beating yourself up because you know you didn't make your personal best today or you didn't eat per that particular amazing diet today, that's not the vibration of love. And so that does not help uncover and help you live your most delicious potential. And, and conversely, when you focus on that frequency, when you focus on, I'm going to come, whatever I do from a place of irrevocable self-love, it is, it is just given I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of my love. When you come from that place, you want to eat the best food. It's no longer a should. It's just you want to eat the vibrational food that matches that frequency of love. And then the ease flows and you, and you radiate as you are doing that day. A hundred percent. And, and I'll add, you know, it becomes a matter of, okay, I see my goodness and my worthiness of love and, and so on. And can I honor that light within with, you know, the best food, with the best, you know, self-care with it's again, as you said, not about should, it's about really respecting and honoring and, and going with what is your truest, deepest intention. Were there any unexpected benefits, unexpected healing, unexpected openings that, you know, you may have had, you came to me with this, this thing of, you know, wanting to do the raw foods more easily, but was there something that uncovered for you during our time together that you weren't even expecting? And can you share that if, if something did? Yeah, several things. Um, I'll share one that I think feels important. Um, uh, that maybe I did expect in, in a way and was actually one of the things that um, drew me to you, but it feels important to mention. Um, and that is this idea of power, personal power. Um, and, you know, it was really something that I could feel from you, um, you know, transpiring through the videos and the dances and, uh, and all of that. I could feel how you were inhabiting your personal power. And, that was a part of the journey that was really important to me. And so I was very uh, blessed, I would say, to be able to, um, to come in contact with the way you inhabit your power and are able to reflect that in the people around you, in the in this case, the person in front of you, right? Um, and and I remember that um, one day we had a conversation about um, psychic boundaries, which was something that I was working on. And this idea that, you know, I was like, to me, I feel everything around me all the time. I'm bombarded, um, you know, with, with the suffering of the world. And, uh, and uh, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm crushing under the weight um, of that suffering sometimes. And, um, and so what you said to me, and, you know, this was during uh, a time where I was juice cleansing. And so everything was, you know, the volume was turned up to a thousand um, on everything that I was feeling. Um, and I remember, you know, I had seen a squirrel that was dying in the street and it crushes me every time. Like it, I, it, it's really difficult for me to to see, um, you know, that that kind of suffering. No matter the kind of species animal that that is experiencing it, right? Um, that squirrel was experiencing suffering, was experiencing dukkha um, in uh, you know in in uh, Buddhist terms. And and what you told me was. Um, try to connect to the idea that, and I knew exactly what you were talking about, that as souls, we all choose in a way to come here to earth school and 
learn certain lessons and have certain experiences and um and that it is part of our growth beyond what happens in each lifetime and in that choice there is power and there is sovereignty and and that really turned things around for me um because with that kind of multi-lifetime perspective, let's say, with that perspective that, yes, sees the suffering, but also sees the power, then it's not anymore a matter of, do I let myself be crushed by the suffering or not? It's, can I feel the suffering? Can I let myself feel it? And at the same time, recognize the power um, in you know the soul that, that is experiencing that. Um, and that allows me to stand in my power as well, right? Um, and so that has been, you know, one one session that I think stuck out and um, and that I you know cherish um, to this day. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that, Fede. I think somebody out there, if not many, are going to resonate really strongly with not just what you shared right now with that, but your whole your whole vibration, your whole energy, and um, and the story of you coming to the work together with me, and and your your uncovering of who your who you are more so, and stepping. What I really witnessed was you stepping into your power in this beautiful way of how I define power, not an arrogant or a domineering force, which is really about insecurity and lack of power but this expansive and relaxed and confident having faith um, self. It was a beautiful thing to witness, a beautiful uncovering and healing. Thank you for, for blessing me with that, with that um, process. Thank you so much to me for, for accompanying me in that, in that process. Is there Deeply. any last thing you would like to add before we wrap up? Maybe just to underscore this idea of easefulness and you know this idea that yes health has lots of things that are very complicated about it but actually there's something that is very simple at at its core um and so I just want to emphasize just how much I felt that throughout our work together, that it's not about controlling a million different aspects of your body and your psyche and um, doing things to yourself to kind of beat your body up into shape and, um, you know, change your behaviors in, in whatever way. It's really about finding that, about finding that easefulness Um of knowing that the body wants to heal and we just get out of the way and, um, you know, support the body in the best way that we can and let it kind of do its thing. And so that I think is, is a crucial, um, component of, of what we did together. That was really important. Mm, that was so well said it's something I don't speak about enough because it's just I think it emanates from the work I do and I take it for granted almost that idea of easefulness and easefulness doesn't mean lazy um it it's 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 um an allowing it's a surrender to the truth of your well-being that is our blueprint and yes. um a lot of times there's a lot of striving a lot of hustle and a lot of like you said do this and that and that and it's just tiring for so many people when if we like you said and i believe you get out of the body the body wisdom way and you find a few maybe practices that really resonate with your entire body mind and spirit to support you in this wild world and this experience called life then the thriving and the deliciousness just come and um healing has no no option but to blossom. Fede, thank you so much for having this time with us and for sharing. Um, you are such a beautiful and powerful and very wise soul and teacher. 
um, I will make sure if this is a video, a YouTube or sharing, I'll make sure I'll leave a link to where people can find your work because you're doing powerful healing work also. Thank you again. And I, I am so excited to continue to see and witness um, your ever blossoming and your ever um, deepening into the power being and the love being that is you. Thank you so much, Tomi. Um, I'm honored to have crossed paths with you and I look forward to uh, continuing to see all the beautiful ways in which you share your power, your love, your wisdom um, with the world. Thank you for doing what you do. I really hope you enjoyed that interview. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave in the comments down below one thing you took away from what Fede and I shared in this interview or something I shared before. I also want to share again with you that while my one-on-one -on -one sessions at this time are completely booked for clients and patients, you can still get engaged with my work. My healing poem dances are my heart medicine and I bring together holistic lecture giving you practical guidance on healing something along with my dance that you can just take in for nourishment for healing i have a few poem dances available you can check on my website down below and i have one that i'm so excited to share with you soon crown crown is if you're somebody who's trying to heal hair issues scalp issues this one is for you so if you're interested in that, definitely get on my email list, my newsletter, so you know when it's available. It'll be coming very soon with a very special offer that is limited. So get on my email list if you're interested in that. I hope something in this video was of help to you. I send you so much love and safety. I invite you to go out and hug, hug. I know I'm going to say it. Go hug a tree today. Our elders with gratitude. I send you love. Take care.